Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Comic Book Podcast. I am B.L. Blankenship, and I'm here today with comic book writer, filmmaker, Richard Wilson. It is awesome to have you on the show, and I will go ahead and say, just as a pretext thing, just like in your comics, the end is only the beginning. We did an <laughs> interview before, and now we're back for a second go, because my, my computer acted goofy about it. Yeah. Um. So you've written a bunch of comics, put out different films. You've got Halloween Girl. You've got Hemlock Avenue coming out. Uh, right. Maple Avenue. Is it Under the Flowers? Is that what it is? Under the Flowers, right, yeah. You're, yes. that, that's been a lot of people say Under the Roses all the time. They just, yes. I don't know why, but that's they, what they go to. They never remember flowers. I, I guess un, Under yeah. the Flowers. But, yes. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of characters in your stories. Um, yeah. Halloween Girl is is but one of them, Charlotte, and she uh, died on Halloween, we find out in one of the comics. Um, she wears Halloween colors. Um, I, I loved in your second Halloween Girl how you break down about her life and all those sorts of things. But it's a really wide, expansive world, and, and I love that. I told you before, I said I, I really liked in the first one how you did the thing where they're looking through a mirror and it's like a portal to another. Yeah, world. I love, I've always loved that in all movies, you know, like old movies especially and and, and comics, you know, the use of the mirror, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I felt like when we talked before, like, you know, we, we, we love a lot of historical stuff as far as like symbolism and things like that. And that's what that is to me. It's like, you know, so I was, I was itching to use the mirror in the comics. I really was because we did it in Under the Flowers for a little bit. It was like, you know, it just reminds me of Dark Shadow. It reminds me of, you know, just all that kind of classic kind of, uh, you know, use of spooky mirrors and, and ghosts showing up and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, but I love it. Oh, yeah. I totally think that there's a huge market for the supernatural. In fact, I was looking at some some comics uh, here here today, and, and your yours are are not on like the demons are going to rip you to pieces so much in every single story. You know, there might be oh. like a, a bad thing, malevolent here or there, but you, you really do have somebody from the other side that's trying to do good and things for people. And, and we said, said before, you know, like kind of the Beetlejuice thing and you get the people that die and they're not, they're not bad people, you know, they want a good outcome. Right. I mean, to me, I mean, to me, I'm a great believer in that whole theory about, time happening all at once. You know what I mean? We're all, there are all these levels of existence happening all at the same time. And that's how I approach it. Cause to me, that's like, in a sense, it's, it, it's, it's a, you know, um, it's a sort of a reality. Cause I just believe, you know, I, I'm actually very sensitive to people in my family that have passed on, for instance, and things like that. So it's very easy for me to kind of create a world that is outside this world because I feel it. I mean, I've had, I've had plenty of weird experiences over the years with actual ghosts. So it's like, it's not, you know, to me, it's not like, hey, let me just try and get imaginative here. It's like, no, this is kind of real, you know, so. I, 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 yeah, oh, I, I totally think there's lots of odd things that, that we can't necessarily pin down or, or yeah, explain. Like um, it, you, you know, certainly there, there's there's situations that people have have been in that where they feel something malevolent, but but then there's times that it's just weird. Uh, my uh, my nephew had um, had said that uh, he saw my papa, who's been dead for years, that he really didn't know, uh, sitting in the rocking chair of, of their house, you know, and told my mom, you, you, you know, not as not as some like play thing that he saw him uh, there. Uh, my mother had saw some dark cloudy thing go up from her basement stairs and round the corner when my son was a little boy late at night and he like got up and looked and the dog went to barking um we uh my wife and me we stayed um in uh oh what's the name of it rugby tennessee rugby tennessee is supposed to be okay. the most haunted place haunted in tennessee place. We, we went into this old house we we stayed the night there and there were a few weird things that went on. I didn't feel anything creepy. You know, right. I, I wasn't, you know, screaming out about the blood of Christ right. and in and, and <laughs> Jesus name, I rebuke this. And, and right. no, nothing weird to that. Right. Just, just like trippy stuff, like the, the water in the shower cut off or the fan started moving uh, and, and then stopped, you know, just just, just some little woo kind, kind of things. But, but nothing that you're going to have like a heart attack over. Or anything like that. My uh, my mother drives a school bus, and um, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's happened on her property. I I really feel like a lot of times things get a scar 
you know, from them well, like I, 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 I'm a great believer in that, like homes and things like that. Places pick up and absorb energy, absolutely, and, and keep it. You know what I mean? I believe yeah. that. She got on her school bus and she smelt cigar smoke. And my uncle that had died, that would be around there, always smoked a cigar. And and she knew somebody was there. And she looked around and nobody was there or right. visible. Yeah. Well, I actually felt this is the weirdest. This is I've had so many things. I don't see anybody, but I don't have any of that kind of thing. I can I, there. It's a it's it's a very strong feeling. And when my mother passed away, I had no idea she had passed away. I realized later that I experienced her death. I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah. And I sat down. I never felt like that before in my life. And I thought, oh my gosh. But it was like, it was, it was, it was distant. It wasn't like right up there. It was like I was feeling something, but it wasn't totally connected. But I sat there. I thought, oh my God, this is, I can't believe this is the way it ends, right? <laughs> But prior to that, I had looked in the mirror. I was editing a film, actually, for work that I had to get done by a certain, like, by Monday. So I was working through the weekend. And I looked in the mirror. And this is the weird part. I can't explain this, but it was as if my face, it was almost like a cloud. Like something, like, superimposed. Like, it was it was darker and cloudy. I can't, I can't even explain it, but it was like, it was like, it was something overlaid. And that's when I felt the heart thing. I went and sat down. Fortunately, it passed. It went away. And then I got up and I went to go walk into the kitchen to get a glass of water. And it was like this white, it was like the sunlight from the kitchen was so bright that suddenly I knew somebody in my family had died and I thought it was my aunt. And I found out the next day because my mom died at a weird time during the day. So everybody had checked on her. She had died at that period. And that's when she would have had her heart attack. So, and I dreamt all night long. She was in the dreams all that night, over and over and over. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I, I've had, like I said, I'm not going to get into a lot, but I've had absolutely um, can feel it around me at times. Certainly not all the time, yeah. but. Uh, I'm a great believer. So again, it's not it's not a real big deep dive for me to kind of like say, oh, I'll just write about these ghosts. You know what I mean? On some level, I'm I believe in you know in a you know all these different levels of, of existence happening anyway. So yeah, there's um, my younger sister. Uh, she's 16 months younger, and we were always like super close. And somebody would be picking on me in school, and she would sense it. And, you know, she'd be like trying to break out of class. So, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. I, um, I had, uh, I'd pastored a church in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. And, uh, when I was in it alone, there was, there's honestly some weird stuff that went on, especially in certain places. And there had been a former pastor and I think he opened up a door to something demonic. He had had an extramarital affair with a woman. And I wondered if it was in, in that, it, like in the church while he was pastoring there, I wondered if it was in, uh, that particular room, his upstairs office, um because you just felt something you know creepy when you were in there alone you uh, sometimes you would almost hear voices but the thing with sound is that our words a sound never dies it just gets to where you can't hear it that's like a scientific fact okay. so you, your words like exist you know uh be be they good or bad or, or right. whatever so i think sometimes people are hearing an echo uh with things but so anyway you've written all this supernatural stuff and that's that's cool for us to talk about that, that there's a reality of that that you yeah. really can't just say, you, you know, uh, obviously if, if it was harmful or whatever, you could say, well, man, that's, that's demonic or, or, oh, or yeah. whatever, but, but there's, there's certain things to where it's like, I don't know. Uh, Very positive you know. for me. I mean, again, I had, I had a really positive, um, I, I, I was, was really ill a, a couple of years ago, just, uh, just uh, during the pandemic, my nerves just went, you know, like bad, you know, like, I've had that, you know, um, anxiety disorders and things all throughout my family. So I've had, I had it my whole life, but finally things just caught up. And I'll tell you what, as I was going through all that, I could feel my mother around me yeah. and other relatives, but around me all the time. And they let me know they were there. They were like showing up as cardinals right in front of you. You know what I mean? Like over and over again, that kind of stuff. Not, it's not like we got all these cardinals around. You know, I, but, I've heard about that before after somebody yeah. died and they saw a cardinal and they said they felt like, is that somebody so and so you know particularly that's that's watching me my my mom is from kentucky 
you know uh but yeah that was uh that was talked about after somebody's I, funeral I know. Real thing. i experienced it so much during that time like she was letting me know i'm here i'm looking out for it i'm looking out for it showing up in the craziest places like like a horror movie in the center in the center of the of a road a regularly traveled road like suddenly there was hardly any traffic like where the hell did all the traffic go and there there's this little cardinal in the center of the road as i'm driving i feel like i was in ghost store you know what i mean it was just like in, in, in a in a cemetery right there above on, on the tree right above your car i mean you know that kind of everywhere you open this and that across the street you're out and there there's a you know and it, it it happened over and over again during that period along with a lot of other things people would say hey i was just thinking about you they'd call um all just it was i was getting this is totally sounds crazy but i was getting impressions about people i didn't even know that were connected to people i knew and when I told them later, it turned out these things were true. I just think there was so much. I was going through such a difficult time. It's like all the doors were open in a way that are not normal. And all this stuff was going in and out. So, you know, but that after that period in my life and after what happened and all the things, there were there, there were too many coincidences. There were too many. It, it wasn't coincidence. It was it was a it was a pattern of. We're here trying to help you. That's why, to me, when writing the stories, it's easy to be have helpful characters that want to help people. I mean, I've experienced that, you know, on my in my own way. So, um, you know, I, I you know I don't think we go and sit on a shelf. I think we continue to work, you know, continue yeah. to do our, to, to do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of that's Charlotte Poe. You know, they're just continuing their gig. Well, I mean, I mean, scripturally, even uh, entertaining angels unaware, you know, that if that is some stranger, you know, is is this is this some celestial being sent from God, right. you know, because you know, I, I I don't know who or, or what this is, right? You know, right. But, but there's a record, <laughs> uh, but but so anyway, in in your in in your world here that that you write in these comics and everything, we were talking about Hemlock Avenue. And right. um, you had said before that, and, and it is a place that's filled with the spirits and the dead, kind of like a right. like a nether world, maybe like Beetlejuice minus the sandworms, or at least none have appeared yet. <laughs> but uh, but a living person could perspectively come yeah. there. It's Twilight Zone. Us talk about that some. I, I mean, it, I think what happened was uh, I, I've been working on a, another Halloween Girl book, and it didn't wasn't working out. There were too many too many short stories inside this one. It wasn't. It didn't feel like a Halloween Girl book. I threw it down. And I was still itchy, like, you should take a week or so off or whatever, and then go back and read, you know, so where am I at? I was itchy as hell. And I've been listening to the Stones Midnight Rambler and, and you know, I, which I've loved for years. And I just, I just all that was going on in the news and just like all this, you know, I, I was just like, just angry at the evil that keeps showing up generation after generation and with a different face. Yeah. And like trying to act, you know, introduce themselves like they're new and they're, they're, they're you know, it's, and I just got, and I sat down and I started to write what became Last Exodus, the first story in Hemlock, yeah, the longer story. It felt so good to give this banal kind of like person who was totally evil, who was basically just another example of the same evil that keeps following us around, you know, through eternity or whatever, give them their comeuppance. You know, they were just, they just thought they were so slick. You know what I mean? But finally, they just bumped into the wrong place and got the wrong kind of help on Hemlock. Yes. And it felt so damn good, BL, to just like, you know, I'm not going to get into the whole story. You know, you know what I'm talking about, but yeah. just it felt great. And I've just, and, and I thought, okay, good. And I thought that'll give me a little, you know, time to, Think about what I'm doing for this Halloween girl story. I got this thing out of my system. After that, I couldn't stop the other four, the other three stories, and they were very difficult to write. A lot of personal themes, more personal than I've ever written before in my life, and they would not stop coming until probably it was about the middle of July. And it wasn't easy because they got more and more personal, and uh, it went from just a good rage fest to, you know, uh, like exploring. You know, a lot of dark stuff for me, a lot of sad stuff, but um, but also I needed to get it out. And I had no idea, I had no plan for this book, no plan whatsoever. So um, I felt really exposed after I wrote it. 
I don't feel that way right now, though. I feel like I've finally gotten past that. I don't know why. It's cathartic. But, oh, it's total writing is total. I I've written so many like wildly violent things, and I'm like, it's right. it's 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 not it's not that you know Stephen King does not dress up like a clown and roam the sewers. That's not what being an author right, is. Right. But, but it's but it's it's right. cathartic to write, you know, stuff. And this, I mean, I've always I loved that about it. This was more that this was more, and I, and I I think it has a lot to do with just you know where I'm at in my life and all that kind of stuff. But it was kind of it was, it, it, it was difficult to do, but I was glad I did it because I feel like I just kind of left that behind. I've written a ton more for Hemlock Gab, and I have a funny feeling I had it split up between the two artists on this because they were very different tones. But I think a lot of it. Petro does a lot of the, the, the more aggressive kind of like, I don't know, I would say like male themed energy kind of stories really well. And I love that. And I could see him maybe doing the whole next book if we get to that, you know, state. That, that, I, don't, I don't know whether, when that's going to happen, but uh, cause there's the Halloween roll thing happening at the end of the year. So that's, we're kind of at our limit right now. Are you going to do? Are you going to do another video or anything? Did we did we talk about that before? Were you going to have another movie or or show or whatnot? The movie thing. I mean, I had to finally just. I really sold my equipment during the pandemic. I sold everything. I just said, I'm not. You know, if, if I were going to do it, I would start over completely. I would get all. I would get a lot smaller, thing and but I don't. It, it's there's so much work and so many resources that goes into just twenty minutes, that I could write a whole novel. Uh, get some wonderful artists or artists and kind of feel like, you know, and get that story to you rather than the way I could do it as a film. I could only do like uh, pieces of it. And that's what was so frustrating to me was I really could. I was getting to the point where I wanted to tell all these expansive stories and I just couldn't do it that way. Anymore. I'm proud of what we did, but they're like, you know, they're like appetizers. You know what I mean? Compared to what I could do with a book. So. I kind of just walked away from it. I, 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 feel, I feel like I'm getting all that I love out of like visual arts and writing and doing these uh, graphic novels and kind of slipping in all kinds of personal stuff too, which feel, feels great. But um, anyway, so, um, but I, I don't have a, a, a real desire to go back and make a film. It's a lot of work when you're doing it all. And <laughs> you're, you know, you're pulling the gang we're all, you know what I mean, together to, to do all this stuff. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, again, for only 15 or 20 minutes, you know. And, and, you, and you've got some atmosphere going on here in, in your books. And you talked about how you liked weather. You've got some good rain oh, and, and, yes. and things going on like that, too. And, and, and I love that. You know, I have an upcoming book. I don't know when it'll be out yet. I, I've, I've written the first one uh, that the interior artist is working on. Uh, the okay. second one's written. The third one's written. I'm working on the fourth one. That's so I can get into doing a novel, but it involves a character who was killed that comes back. It's not good for the people that were responsible for oh. that. But it's but it's in the winter time, and and just personally, I hate the cold. I hate the winter. Uh, right. embl emblematically, the fall and the winter, everything dies. So that works good when you're tying it to right. like death and Absolutely. all that. Um, it has it has some legit snow because it takes place in Youngstown, Ohio. If it was in East Tennessee, we yeah. might get like a dusting. We actually had one of our biggest snows that we've had ever yeah. since I've been here. The other one was in like 90 something. So that's like a rare freak thing. Yeah. But, but, you know, like up north, you get like a real snow. I've been in white oh, yeah. and all that. Yeah, we, we get a couple feet. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I mean, it's we, we it hasn't been that bad the last couple of years that we haven't had snowstorms like we did 10 years ago. We had some really bad ones 10 years ago. Um, but yeah, we're used to it, you know. <laughs> but I love, like I said to you, isn't it cool with, with when you're with the story that you're writing too? Don't you get that feeling where you got the bad storm, and it's like I said, weather is the common denominator. It's like we're all stuck, you know what I mean, with the exception of a supernatural character or something like that. But people are like level, you know what I mean. Everybody's like in the same boat, and they have to rely on each other. In a sense, you know what I mean. It's just like I just, I love that. I love that about weather. It just, you know, it stops everything. What is yeah. your happy weather? What's your, what's your happy weather season? Happy, well, geez, happy weather for me is just like a beautiful fall day, you know, yeah. uh, just like crisp fall day, leaves blowing, you can smell all the, all that, all that great fall smell. And I love the spring too. I'm, I'm a big fan of the spring. 
I love that, like all the all the flowers coming up and all that kind of stuff. And and, and temperature wise, those are both really normal. But I live in the worst place in the entire world for allergies, Appalachia, East Tennessee. Oh, and, okay. and, and and I have horrible allergies. Oh. So I, I am I am a summer person because of that. Because when it when it's a spring, everything's blooming. I mean, you get hit with like a mouthful yeah. of pollen. In the fall, something's rotting and it's making you sick. Yeah. Um, in the, in the winter, it's just it's just cold. It's not as cold as it is some places, but it's beautiful. cold. Yeah. So I I like the summer for that reason. I I am a beach person when I relax. I live okay. in the mountains, so I go to the beach. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm uh, I'm I'm an old man beach person who just sits there and just you know eventually you know my daughter will say, "Come on, Dad, let's walk down to the water," you know. But uh, I'm not like a beach beach person. My sister digs the beach like nobody does. I, like, I hear nobody. that. You know, they just, they are those people. They are beach people. I just like, I, but I do like, I like being near the water, period. You know, I just love hanging out there, even at night, you know, after everybody's coming on the boardwalk or whatever. I love hearing, like, there's another thing I love. I love crashing of the waves. Yes. Like when you're sleeping down, when you're staying down there near the, you know, uh, we're lucky we have a really great shoreline in South Jersey. That's one of the only things we have. I love how when you're in the ocean and you just let it beat you and, and been in the waves, I mean, and you've been in it all day and then, yeah. and then you go to bed and you can still feel it rocking you. I totally remember that. I, I, I've had, that's so funny. I'd forgotten all about that. But when you said that immediately, I was like, I've had that happen. Yes. When I was a kid, I would be down Wildwood and that's how I would feel at the end of the day. That's so funny. I forgot all about that. That's cool. So, so you've got this interesting world that people can come into the the Hemlock Avenue, um, but it, it, it kind of opens the door and invites them in. Is that the way you would say it? I, absolutely, and I and I mean it, again, we were talking before of, but it's about um, it's about the characters, and it's about you should be able to be able to relate to somebody on at least page one or two. You should be able to, you know, be invited in. Like it should feel, it should feel familiar. You know, I mean, I, I try and work pretty hard to, to get boil things down to an essence of things that most of us have in common. You know what I mean? And go from there. And I think my guide in a lot of that is we we're talking about Rod Serling and, and Ray Bradbury. You know, I mean, you that you could tell they loved the town. You know what I mean? And, and and things about this town as much as they were into telling this cool story. You know, they were just as invested. And that's how I feel. Because I love my town, Laurel Springs, which is what Crystal Springs is based on. And I didn't tell you, Walt Whitman used to summer in our old and we shot inside his old summer house many times for under the flowers. That's neat. He used to write down uh, by what's called Crystal Spring. Uh, it's a park in the town, beautiful uh, park. And he used to write um Specimen days is what he's writing down there. That's what he's known for, for that. But uh, I think if you come at it with a love of a place where you come from and then go from there, I think you're going to get people engaged because they're going to see themselves right away. You know what I mean? It, yeah. That's how I feel about it. But to me, it's got to be, you know, it's kind of like Maybury on acid. You know what I mean? It's got to be like that. You've got to have that warmth in there, too, with all the craziness. Yeah. Or, or if you distinctively hated a place and wanted to make it miserable. Well, that's true. Too. <laughs> that, that might work. That might work too. Um, but, I, I, but I couldn't I, stay there. That's the thing. I, I couldn't like stay there in the atmosphere that long. I would just drive me crazy. I could dip in and then I'd have to go back. I, I wrote a uh, I wrote a, a, a novella and and it sells quite well. And I mean, it is like as R in C seventeen or what whatever it, it can be is possible. It's, it's insanely violent. It's insanely sexualized. Gory as all can get out. It's called the Confederado, a Western horror tale of Mesoamerican gore. And in the book, distinctively, it rains the entire time because I wanted it to be, you know what, it's like a rain, it's like whatever. But if it just rains and rains and rains and rain, I wanted it to be like that miserable, like, you know, shut up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Reminds me of the weather from last summer or whatever. We had that kind of like constant rain not go away. But uh, we get a lot more rain around here every morning. Um, but I totally get that. I just, again, I, you know, that's another thing. We can all relate to, like you said, weather. We've all had, you know, there's just common things that I think people get so, 
<laughs> people get so excited about a concept that they forget about anchors. You know what I mean? In a story. That's really what I'm trying to say. And it's great. The concept's cool and it's great, but but you have to you have to come from somewhere, I think. You know what I mean? Where you have to be able to go somewhere to get a break from this cool place that's been created. You know what I mean? I mean you have to you know, you have to give people little rest stops along the way. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like I I feel like you have to have that build into for me a story. And maybe that's just a selfish thing. Maybe I need it. I need to take those breaks. You know what I mean? Oh good God, we're back in the kitchen now. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I love small towns. I'm really obsessed with small town America because I had such a cool, not perfect, believe me, experience though growing up in Laurel Springs because it was such a tiny, tiny town. It was like old, and you could walk from one end to the other. Like, and you know what I mean? Everybody knew everybody. It was one of those idyllic kind of places, you know. Yeah. So people don't share the same. I mean. Some of my friends do, but I mean, I talk to some other people in town. I I I, I romanticize it, and they're like, "Huh?" But it, to, for me, that's what it was. You know, it gave me a, it just sparked your imagination. I mean, you're you're in Tennessee, so you've got probably you're probably closer even to the woods and all that stuff than I am. You're, oh, it's it's right, right by me. Yeah, it's 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 all around me. So I was I was born in uh, Toledo, Ohio, and lived there till I was twelve. I had like right. the worst the worst childhood in the world. Uh, my, my wife, anytime I, that I've taken her to Ohio, she's like, I, I thought, I thought it was really awful. I said, that's Toledo. I said, there's, there, there's places that are very, that's like New York city and, and the state of New York. It's not, the state of New York is not all like New York city. Um, oh. if, if you go to Buffalo, it's essentially Niagara Falls, you know, um, and, and they have a cereal factory and, and you can smell the cereal. It smells like lucky charms or whatever in the air. You know, there's different places with different tones that right. that it's you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, you just you've got all that great. Like I said, uh, we we had we were lucky that we had the, the Crystal Spring Park and the lake there because not many towns had their own little kind of like getaway like that. You know what I mean? Where you could just you had a park like at the end of town. I mean, it was by water. You know, real water. You could go fishing there. It wasn't like it was you know a little pond or something. And we, I think, you know, we used to get a lot of crap because they, they, you know, they call us all hillbillies because we were down, way down, you know, uh, that way. But I loved it. And I just loved being near, near the woods and all that stuff as a result of growing up like that. Like, hey, man, let's go. We're going to go fishing. We're going to, it was all like very Tom Sawyer for, for New Jersey. But, you know, people don't think about Jersey this way because our end of Jersey is why they call it the Garden State. We're, we're, we're the green part, you know, off and on down great farms and all that kind of stuff so but you know when you have all that around you i mean i just feel that i'm sure you do too it sparks your imagination every day you know being around it um, i think it does for me anyway. yeah there, there's all kinds of different places and you know obviously we've got cities you know like knoxville or chattanooga or nashville or whatever so i mean there's there's a different tone. Um, there's there's a different vibe. Uh, the, the politics are are different, you know. Uh, depending if you're in a rural area or if you're in a city area, they're they're polarizing, you know. Different everything is the atmosphere, you know, the way that people act, all that. Um, and and Tennessee, uh, here over the last I don't know how long, we've had an influx of a lot of people from like all over. In fact, there's a police officer from Jersey that uh it works in Rockwood. Um, okay. Now, but but yeah, there's there's people from all over moving all over the state. Uh, Winnie from the Wonder Years, I told you last time, she's above Nashville now. She lives out there, you know, wanted to to leave L.A. and get her kid in like a more rural, you know, not it's not even rural where that is. But, you know, it's it's country and it's it it's not Los Angeles. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, Thank you for that, to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to. Live. I love L.A. to visit and have fun, but I wouldn't want to live there. It's impressive. Like the size of it is is impressive, but but pe it was like the most hostile driving, and I drove an eighteen wheeler all over the country that I've ever been uh, on ever uh, anywhere. Hey, we got about nine more minutes to go. Talk more about your books. Tell people where they can check your stuff out. RTWfilms.com, and of course it's this films because that's how we started, so we're stuck with that URL. Uh, RTWfilms.com. Go there, and you can uh, order. Um, Halloween Girl Books uh, or Hemlock Ave, uh, pre-order that because that comes out April 26th. And uh, uh, autographed, 
personalized, whatever, and all that jazz, but only at our website. Uh, eventually, when it goes on sale, it'll be available uh, online on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and the lots of bookstores and comic shops. You can order it through there. But uh, but we're we're selling the autographed copies and all that stuff. So I will continue to do that. <laughs> but um, that's for Hemlock Ave. And then towards the end of the year, we're going to have uh, the first two chapters of Halloween Girl Book Three, Gods and Monsters, coming out. I'm excited about that, uh, too. So, uh, and then we'll finish that up in the early part of next year or whatever. But I am just kind of like excited about this book coming out. And I get kind of a break. You know, we're going to take it slow with those first two chapters or whatever. It feels good to just enjoy all this now because I've been running really hard the last couple of years and i'm i know you sound like you do that all the time oh, yeah uh, it, it wears me out yeah and, and you get to the point though you just kind of have to say i just want to have some fun and take a break go down to the beach or whatever and i think i'm gonna I'm doing a little bit more of that stuff you know so uh you know um but i i'm writing a ton of stuff i have a ton of stuff for another hemlock ad book and i'm working on i guess what, what would amount to a fifth halloween girl book uh, an idea for that um currently but just making notes but i think it's more important for me to kind of just have a good just enjoy things more i think i feel like we've been pushing and pushing and you know it's been great and i'm glad we have because it's you know we're getting known a little bit more at a time and that's fun but i just kind of want to enjoy all this like you know what i mean this was like oh good we're gonna do this and it's like i'm really enjoying this you know what i mean i like talking to you whereas when i started doing all this kind of stuff it was like you know, am I doing this thing right? Am I, you know, and now I just enjoy the whole process now, you know, getting to meet everybody, you know, I would talk to everybody. I'm not, I'm not been self conscious about it. And, you know, it's just kind of like hanging out, hanging out at the local bar and having a beer and saying, hey, what's up? You know what I mean? And just start talking about all this stuff. Because as you and I talked last time, the horror community is great. And they are, oh, it is. It is. They're fantastic. I love them. And I love you guys um, because I, it's, and I'm just enjoying it more now than even ever before. I always enjoyed it, but now I really am kind of savoring it. That's the word. Uh, more than I used to. Absolutely. My Frank Cooper Halloween costume that's, shirt. That's cool. Very cool. Well, man, thank you again for coming on. I encourage everybody to check that out. I'm going to have the information like all below this video and everything um share it you will you'll you'll be hit up with it it will be out right here this week um that's it's a it's a cool read man it is i enjoyed your stuff my favorite still halloween girl too because i liked it going into the dynamic of who she is i i, I liked that so much but yeah you, you've got some neat stuff there and, and a lot of cool concepts and it goes in different directions it's not just bound to that one character and oh. everything, but it's all about that metaphysical world and interacting with ours. Right, absolutely. And there's more on the way. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, buddy. Take care.